Hey guys, this is Killerob speaking, and today we are not continuing our current un ongoing Let's Play, but rather have a little bit of a design talk, because uh, the points I made about the progression in the game of your pro cyclist seem to be misconstrued by a few people, so that means to me that I explained myself poorly, and I think it is an extremely important point to understand if you want to play uh, the pro cyclist mode at a reasonable level and it is something that I've been observing throughout many let's plays as well and yeah it was misconstrued my complaining about poor level ups was misconstrued as me complaining about having bad luck or uh, the game being too hard or something along those lines but it really isn't I wish the game was a lot harder I wish you wouldn't gain as many st as many stat points and what I'm complaining about is not that, it is that there are poorly implemented game mechanics, or what seems to be that. And that is what we're going into in, in depth today. It is about the concept of potential and what it means in PCM and what it should mean. Uh, and what it means in reality, and there's a distinct difference there. So, first up, let's uh, bring, bring up my little notes here on screen. Uh, Kirob, uh, please, please do that now. What is potential? Well, what does it mean if someone says someone didn't live up to his potential? You all know what it means, unless you don't quite know the nuance in English or something. Um, but it is the difference between the current is and what could have been or what could be in future. And I think that is a concept that many of you understand um, just straight up without any explanation. That's obvious. So what does it take to, for someone to reach his or her potential? Well, it usually takes time to get there. It takes resources. It takes a lot of focus on that task to get there. And it usually also requires a good teacher that guides you along the way. And it is pretty safe to say that more or less to a very high degree, all those are true for your rider you are creating in the game. The focus is one that is the only one that can be debated here because you can choose your training focus and we're going to get back to that. But let us first create a rider. And uh, that rider will just be a simple, simple rider. It will be a... What, what, what do we want him to be? Something that is very contradictory, once again. So we are going for a bardeur and a climber. And here we have a selection for potential. And now that we have um, discussed what it means, we all know what that should mean, right? The higher the potential, the easier the rider will be able to develop his attributes during career. Okay, cool. That makes sense. To start in this mode, blah, 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 it's advisable. Yes, we are no noobs anymore. We don't need that. Or so he thought. Um, and yes, so this just means that if you have higher potential, this is exactly what we thought. If you have higher potential, it will be easier to get skill points. Or not skill points, but rather stat points. These points. These points are the ones you're starting with. These are the is. And the um, what could be is seen on, a tra on the training page where we can see our progression. So let's head over there. And this is the page I'm talking about. The training progression page. We again have our current skills. Uh, I think they're slightly different to the ones we were seeing before. No, maybe not. Um, anyway, the attribute points that we currently have and our potential with a bit of a wiggle room range. And if you actually look into the save file, you can read your, um, your precise potential points from there. Um, and the only time you can be sure about anything is when it shows 85. Otherwise, it is exactly within that range at some point. And, uh, but this is really just a singular value. It is not a range. What is also true is that if you are selecting a lower potential from the initial dropdown when you are creating your rider, um, you are getting less potential. About one difference per stat per level. And that is very noticeable. 
Um, if you are generating a um, Rider of Grand Champion potential, the potential ratings for these stats are very high. And if you are generating one with um, very, what is very good or something, that's the lowest one, <laughs> which is still pretty high, um, then these potential numbers will be quite a bit lower. And you can track that if you're also editing your save files or editing, rather viewing your save files uh, for what potentials you have. And yes, uh, so let's just assume that the grand champion potential is the right-handed number and the, um, the worst potential you can select is the left-handed number. So what difference does that make in here? Well, it should be three or four points. And uh, I think it's... I think in practice it's about three, two to three points, and uh, in, in here it's of course always a range of um, of four. And please don't misunderstand this now as the range that you get uh, is, or the potential you have on very good is always the left hand number. No, those ranges are are randomized around the actual number that you are that you have, and they of course are. Like completely shiftable in that way. Also, every time you regenerate a rider, these change. Uh, and the actual potential numbers behind these ranges change. I've checked that with several re remakes of the same rider. One thing that is very intuitive to uh, all of us who have gained any skills whatsoever during their lifetime, which is all of you, um, you will be very familiar with the concept of that it's very easy to improve at the start, but the closer to your potential you get, the harder it becomes. And that potential might be limited by the factors um, like no real teacher or no resources, no time, uh, can't really focus on it. You have a mental fortitude of a, of a drowned squirrel. Um, so yeah, that, is, that could all be in the way, but in this case, we know that these are the actual potential numbers. We are talking about straightforward game mechanics. So those are the numbers we would be able, or rather should be able to reach, if uh, we put our, our focus on it. And that is the only thing we have in the game to steer our progress. Or is it? Because there is this thing that is called increased potential. And if we increased our potential, the gap between the stats, between the current and the potential stat becomes larger. That difference should mean that the larger the difference is, the quicker you progress uh, towards your potential at the start, like stats-wise, points-wise, so if you have a difference of 20, you should progress four times as fast as with a difference of five. So when you could expect a, a stat increase of one in a given period of time in with the uh, difference being five, then you would in the same time expect an increase of four points uh, if your difference is 20 between the potential and the current. I think that makes sense. It follows a curve. Of course, it flattens out a lot towards the end. It becomes ever harder. It is the difference, the size of the difference, which, gi which gives you the prog um, progress towards your goal per unit time. And that is a very rough approximation, but it's, it is something that feels intrinsically right. And it is quite close to reality. It's a, like the first order approximation of how it works. If you got your um, your time constant right, then that is how it works. So if we are talking about uh, potential and difference and the current stats, let's take a look at this very rider that we have created here in Spreadsheet. Uh, I'm just going to paste that image right next to it. And there we have the, a nice little overview of where the difference is large and where it is small. And we can see that we have a reasonably high flat skill already. And if we take the left-handed number, uh, left hand, left hand number, not left-handed number, then we see that the difference is just nine. A nine difference, compare that to stamina, for instance, which is a difference of 24 points. That is massive. 
That is the biggest difference in here. All the secondary stats are very large differences. The, se uh, the next largest is actually in Prologue, with a difference of 17. And the worst one of them all is in Cobblestones, with just 7. So, from just that, intrinsically, forget what you know about Pro Cycling Manager. What would you assume happens if we just continue focusing on uh, Baroudeur, which is uh, one of the, which is the main specialization of this? What would you expect would happen? Well, we have talked about focus, right? Focus is now Baroudeur. So you are going to fulfill your potential as a Baroudeur. And whatever is along the way with other skills is taken along, but what is not on the way is completely ignored and the potential is not reached in those things. So if you are a great potential climber and you focus on Baroudeur, you will, or rather you should, not see much in the ways of mountain stat increases. And here's the crux of things. That is not how it works in Pro Cycling Manager. And that is what pisses me off. <laughs> so how does it work in Pro Cycling Manager? Well, that's a good question. They never say it. But uh, from all that we have seen throughout the years, and I don't think they have changed the underlying mechanics. Uh, it feels the same way now as it did two years ago. Uh, by the way, I did a very nice Let's Play where it's like from Baroudeur to Tour de France Rider, something like that, where I tried the, uh, the this exact thing that you start out as a Baroudeur. Um, I don't think I even had that. It was a, pu a pure Baroudeur, I believe. And um, maybe Baroudeur time trial. Can't remember. Um, anyway, and I tried to become a, a Tour Rider by increasing my potential in the other skills and trying to grab as many mountain points as possible by going into mountain focus and so on. So what happens? What happens? Um, well, the, the game decides for you how many points you get and that is not dependent on uh, how much potential you have. And it's completely weird. It's not, not even dependent on what focus you choose in most cases. You can choose a focus of flat riding or rather baroudeur and you get no flat skill, despite there being still a massive difference of like 15 or something. That is entirely possible. So what is going on in PCM? That doesn't feel right, does it? And this is exactly what I'm complaining about. Not that it's difficult to up your stats or whatever. No, that's fine. It should be harder than it currently is to up your stats. Um, what I'm complaining about is the dichotomy between the focus and your actual stat game. What we have done in our little let's play, in the currently ongo ongoing one, and also in the one from, Tour de, from Baroudeur to Tour de France top 10 or whatever it was called, um, is to increase our potential. So did we gain more stats because we increased our potential? Like uh, going from a potential time trial of 74 to 82, let's say. So naturally you would um, anticipate that, okay, you are, you're increasing the difference between the current stat and the potential, which means that if you were to focus on that and try to gain skills in it, by actively training towards that, by trying to fulfill your potential in that stat, and there is no other way than choosing like time trial specialization, and we can go loop through and see what happens if you choose that, right? Then uh, on every level up, I mean. And what happens is there is no difference. Or it is so small, that difference, that it's unnoticeable. And that fucking pisses me off because it's so unrealistic. And it is a bad game mechanic because and now just from a pure like, okay, but this is PCM, killer Rob. I mean, don't be so hard on the game. It's just a poor game and it has only been developed for 20 years. How are they supposed to live up to their potential this quickly? They've only had 20 years to develop the game. Ah, sorry. Yes, only 20 years. They haven't lived up to their potential, have they? Um, uh, yes, uh, so uh, lost my train of thought. 
Now, the train of thought was that if you have an important gameplay mechanic, and that is A, stat increases, B, potential increases. You have those two options. And one of those options is always... Oh, no, no, let's... No, not Don't use the word always. It's bad, Kiro. It's not always. There are instances where it's somewhat useful. Where it's mostly completely fucking retarded to choose and the other one is always good to choose or almost always rather i need to be consistent there almost always good to choose then you have fucked it up in game design right that is not a way, the way to design it you can't present the player with a choice that is almost always shit and one that is almost always good because then that is no real choice. If there is no real choice, then you shouldn't present the player with a choice because it's like it, it's misleading. <laughs> and I have been misled for 20 years almost since I played Pro Cycling Manager. What was it? The first one? Don't even remember. Maybe maybe Cy Pro Cycling Manager 2 or something. It was way back then. Um, and well, back back then you yeah you did have potentials. And riders lived up to them or not. You, of course, you didn't have <laughs> pro cyclist mode. But uh, that's another story. So, yeah, what is going on with this? Why is the, the increase in stats not taking into account much? Let's not say not at all, because I don't know. But I can tell you that it's not much. Why doesn't it take into account that much your remaining potential? So... One thing that I seem to have noticed, which is odd, is that you could argue that, oh, no, Kerob, that is, that is quite wrong. I've, I've been experienced it very differently. Because if I make a climber and focus on climber, I reach my potential really quickly and it's, it's all as it should. And yes, I agree. That seems to be very odd. So somehow it does take that into account. And I think what it really is is that it takes your initial initially created rider profile and then it lets you live up to those potential stats but somehow seems to be ignoring any potential increases you had i know that's probably not how it's working but that is certainly what i've been observing so what would work is if you take your your climber sprinter like we have and you will be a decent climber and a, a really good sprinter. Yes, yes, and that is exactly what we are doing there. But we have potential increases in time trial and we have a massive gap between our actual time trial stat and our potential time trial stat. And now if we choose to um, increase our attributes and focus on time trial, fuck all happens. Why is that? There seems to be something broken in there. Something really broken. And I don't know what it is because this is all a black box. There are no values, no feedback that is given to you that is more in depth. So I can't really tell what is going on. But there's something really wrong in this system. And it is annoying uh, that it's not working better. Because <laughs> now to close it off, that means that this game mode doesn't live up to its potential. Because this would be so amazing if you actually could make if it just worked the way you intrinsically and intuitively feel that if you have a higher potential and you focus on that very thing then you should be able to live up to it even if it's lower like if we have a time trial skill like this rider of 60 and we have a potential of 74 but he never trains towards time trial yeah then we fucking well shouldn't be reaching 74 that's crystal clear and never should be the case that would be bad game design but if we focus entirely on on time trial then yeah hell yeah we should reach it and but why sacrificing other stats where we potentially have <laughs> potentially no don't use potentially there uh, where we uh, likely have a higher potential than in that time trial I think I've made my point clear now. 
I wish the game was a lot harder, because it's trivial, let's be honest. Um, at this point, at least, especially with using the skills. If you use the tools that are available to you, it's trivial. Um, at least if you're a very experienced player. So um, that's a shame. But this p potential increase that they just have fucked up the entire branch of possibilities, the endless possibilities of character customization that opens itself up if you were able to use potential increases properly, then, yeah, you're playing with some handout cards that are, yeah, you are now a sprinter and a climber, and that's it. You can't change a thing, because somehow it's broken. Yeah. Potential increases. That That is my complaint, really, and I think it's now a lot clearer to many of you what I meant. Um, and... Let's see how it plays out with our little rider. Um, he sure is <laughs> quite successful already. I don't think he will win a tour. That's that uh, now. No, he won't. No, won't won't ever. But maybe we can squeeze in some wins on the tour. Wouldn't that be fine? Yes. So I hope you enjoyed the enjoyed this uh, more design discussion, game mechanics discussion video, uh, and the series will continue as normal. All right. Leave your comments below. And uh, I see you guys next time.